these boxes are pretty easy to make. The, the angles might look a bit complicated, but they're all there for a reason. The entrance hole is set back between the sides. The roof overhangs a little bit further. Um, the tray is angled downwards. There's drainage gaps. The joints, the vertical joints are all sealed with a weatherproof sealant and the sides overhang the floor. Now this is all done to try and keep the contents dry. That's really important. Barnell nest debris is amazingly absorbent. And if any rainwater can get into the box, even a little bit of seepage, it will saturate the nest debris and that can chill eggs and it can even kill small hatched young in the nest. So we've got to keep water out of the box. That's the reason for a lot of the design details. This design has been thoroughly tested, but not all nest boxes are this good at keeping water out. One really good thing about this nest box design is the depth from the bottom of the hole to the bottom of the box. The minimum distance that should be is 450 millimetres. The reason for that is because young barn owls in the nest are really, really mobile. If they can get out before they're ready to fly, they can easily fall to the ground and most of them will die. So we need to keep the young in the box until they're very, very mobile and able to get back in. To build a box like this, you're going to need a sheet of plywood. 9mm plywood is adequate. It must be exterior quality ply. We don't want it delaminating when it gets wet. If you can get pressure treated plywood, fantastic. You're also going to need about 6 metres of batten, that's thin strips of wood, ideally pressure treated as well, and about 100 screws or nails. The dimensions you need and a copy of the cutting plan are all on the Barn Owl Trust website. And here's Jazz, who's actually going to cut it out for us. Using pressure treated 50 by 25 millimeter batten, use the plywood front to mark out the first batten. It needs to be three centimeters short at the bottom. Repeat this process for the other side. Once you've cut the battens, fix into position using 3.5 by 30 millimeter screws. Note that this batten is wider than the inspection hatch opening at this point. This helps to stop the removable panel from falling into the box. Turn the front piece over and then mark and fit a batten along the top edge. And screw into place. Now mark a batten to go along the bottom, three centimetres away from the edge. An adjustable bevel is useful for marking the angles. And use this piece to mark the length of a second batten which is slightly shorter. This second batten fits adjacent to the bottom one and helps support the removable inspection panel.
Here you can see the protruding edge of the baton, which will help support the removable panel. On the outside of the box fit two short battens cut at 45 degrees. These hold the bottom of the panel in position and allow it to be opened. The panel itself has a little wooden block for a handle and a little brass bolt to secure it. Take one of the sides and start the screws off along the edge closest to you. Now make a mark 13 centimetres back from the top corner and three centimetres back from the bottom corner. Along this line, insert five screws. For the back, repeat the same process as the front and note that the extra batten goes across the top rather than the bottom. And using all-weather sealant, apply a generous bead all the way along the join between the plywood and the batten. Now place the side piece in position and screw through. Then stand up the back and side and rest the front against them. Once again, apply a generous bead of all-weather sealant along the join. Now make a mark on the side 10 centimetres back from the front and line up the front with this mark and fix into position. At the bottom, make sure the corners meet. Now apply a generous bead of sealant along both joints Position the side piece to match the other side and screw into position. Lay the box down and insert the floor. For the bottom and the top, we use longer 5 by 40 millimeter screws. Screw through into the battens along the front and the back. Pop the roof on and screw through into the battens along the back and the front. Use thick roofing felt that's guaranteed for 10 years and cut a piece 62 by 57 centimetres. Making sure it's central. You can fit the roofing felt using 20 millimetre galvanised clout nails, but make sure you only nail where there is a batten on the inside.
carefully cut the felt to overlap at the corners and use a generous amount of sealer to prevent water getting in. Now turn the box over and fold the felt under the front edge. Also fold it at the corners and secure with a clout nail. You can put one nail through each side, but only where there is a baton on the inside. For nest boxes we sell, we use a torch on roofing felt. This is a brilliant system. It means you don't need any nails and there's less chance of water ingress. Using a weight to hold the felt in position, Fold back and heat one half of the felt and then press into position. Now fold back and heat the other half of the felt and press that into position. Once again, be careful trimming the corners using a sharp Stanley knife. In this case, only a small overlap is needed and no sealant. Heat the side and firm into place. This is not quite as easy as it looks, but practice makes perfect.
For hanging the box on the side of a tree, we offer a fitting solution using hangers made out of recycled plastic. To fit them, turn the box on its front. Drill an 8mm hole through the back centrally, 7cm down from the top. Pop the M8 coach bolt through the hanger, use two washers as spacers and tap the bolt through. On the inside use one washer and an M8 nylock nut. The bottom hangers are fitted in the same way, but the holes are 5 cm up from the bottom and 42 cm apart. Actually, you can vary that measurement to suit your particular tree. Finally, the exercise platform. There are 1 cm gaps for rainwater drainage at the front and at the back, the side battens are inset by 13 mm. These two side battens are 27 centimetres long with one end cut at an angle of 20 degrees. Fix the battens into place. Now fix the front batten in place. This is really important as it gives the young owls something to grip when exercising. Lift the tray up in position as far as it will go until the angled battens meet the front of the nest box. This should be approximately six centimeters below the owl hole. Screw through the overhanging sides into the battens, angling the screws to ensure the sharp ends don't project through. So our nest box is ready. Don't forget to uh, fit the inspection hatch and make sure it's bolted securely. There we are. Uh, the hanging system, these uh, recycled plastic uh, nest box hangers, this is available from the Barn Owl Trust. Sometimes if the tree is the right configuration, you might be able to mount the box in the fork of a tree and you don't need a hanging system at all. Alternatively, you can do a hanging system with pieces of timber. But if you want this, as I said, you can buy it directly from the Trust. So there's your nest box all ready to put up. You can find more information on the Barn Owl Trust website. And if you'd like to make a donation to support this work, that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm.